Are you happy or miserable? You yeah. dinosaur. I have to get his tail here. I'm gonna get him off the ground and he's... Oy! <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> that thing was vicious. Any trout swimming by, bam! Gonna smoke him. Not anymore. That's one less problem we gotta face in the pond. All right, guys, we got a bit of a problem. Well, we got a big problem. Well, we got a small problem that's gonna end up as a big problem, put it that way. So just over here at uh, my brother's house, we're gonna pick up the advanced pro trap. We've got it stashed away in the bush. We're gonna put that to good use. So let's get this loaded up. We're gonna head over to the pond and I'll let you know exactly what's going on and how we're gonna fix our problem. All right, all loaded up. Trip over to the trout pond. You guys remember Mark? He's been helping me a lot with this farm pond. We've got a deal with uh, Linden trout hatcheries. They're supplying us with fish. Thing is, they're coming really soon. So if we don't deal with this problem right now, we are not going to be able to deal with it. And it's something that I believe it's going to significantly reduce the output that we get from our trout. Potentially something that's gonna outcompete our trout. So we're gonna deal with it now. A little pit stop first. Mark's gonna check out his, he's got baby chicks here. And uh, I'm gonna make sure they're doing all right. This is a legit farm. They got all sorts of things going on. Some egg layers in here. So my brother had chicks last year, but he decided not to get any this year because it was so much work. Mark's got a whole incubator. It's not an incubator anymore. What do you call it? A brooder. That's a better word for it. So got a bunch of uh, little birds in there. So these ones are meat birds. They're gonna end up as food. <laughs> they're not gonna lay any eggs. They're just gonna get real big real fast. In your brooder, you're supposed to start your chicks off at 95 degrees. And every day as they get older, you start to reduce that temperature. And so when I came in here, it was at 93 degrees. And right now they should be around more like 87. So it was literally the window on the front because there's a glass window there. It was sweating. Yeah, they're, they're moist, they're sweating. Sorry dudes, it was too hot for you. It's funny, as soon as you mentioned that, I could feel like the heat coming off the window. It's yeah. a little hot in there. It is very hot. <laughs> This Gowdy Farm's got a new addition. They've got pigs this year. So uh, Mark's, uh, Mark and Jessica have been working away, and Kirk obviously as well, been working away. They made a little structure here, temp temporary structure, once they get it going. But uh, yeah, there's gonna be some pigs on the menu this year for sure. <laughs> this is Jessica, she doesn't wanna take, she doesn't wanna talk, so I'm gonna talk for you for her. But they made this, this is this temporary permanent. You don't have to answer. Just nod. Tempor temporary permanent. Temporary permanent. It's a it's a a test to see if it'll actually work. Oh. And then if it does work, then we'll do something that maybe costs some money and is permanent. Pigs don't need much. A little bit of shade, Wait, shelter, hey. food, hey. place to root. Yeah. They're happy. Water. Water. So they can make mud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, water's mud, but they love mud. And they turn that mud into sunscreen because they get sunburnt. Right. Yeah, that's a cool. I didn't even think of that. Yep. Roll around in the mud, get out of the sun, protect from insects and mosquitoes. And yep. They make themselves a wallow and then they roll in it. Their names are bacon, pork chop, ham, sausage, and ribs. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> And one has a middle name, Sizzles, apparently. Sizzles, yeah. Sizzles. Bacon Sizzles. Jillian, Jillian calls one Sizzles. Yeah. Bacon, is that what it is? Bacon Sizzles? Bacon Sizzles. So this is the first look at the pond since we dug. I've been away for a few weeks. So you guys are seeing the pond cleared up as I'm seeing the pond cleared up. In the last video you guys saw, we dug this whole section out. All this gravel that I'm standing on right now stuff we took out of the pond so the issue we're having right now we have bass we have bass that's the problem well bass and trout are basically mortal enemies and once the bass get big enough they'll pick out the trout pick off the trout real easily the next problem we have is we actually have snapping turtles in here the thing about the snapping turtles is they'll pick off our trout as well so we've got the advanced pro trap here we're going to throw it Probably in the shallows here, if we catch a bass, we have to catch a bass first used for bait. We'll bait up the advanced pro trap and we'll leave it overnight. And if we catch a snapping turtle, we'll relocate it. I'd love to eat the turtle, but they won't let me eat turtle anymore. They closed their season down permanently. That's a whole other discussion. I completely disagree with the decision that the, the governing bodies have done here in Ontario, Canada. I think we have lots of snappers. They're not endangered and they mostly get hit by cars. We're just gonna get the ones that are in here out and put them at another spot. 
see a bunch of them. So the trick I think is going to be to kind of get them interested in it and then let it sit on the bottom. Got one key down on the worm. Now it's digging it. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I got the trick already. The trick is you let you get them going and then you let the worm sit on the bottom. Ouch, I hate bass. They're so sharp spinies. I like the soft trouts. So there we go. That's what's going to plague us later on. There we go. One man down. One tiny little bass, <laughs> but the smaller hook is the key and letting it bringing them in and letting it fall to the bottom. Can't see for the glare, and I think you gotta sight fish these. Just wanna get one on it and then let it drop to the bottom there. I got one looking. Oh, I thought I had one there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, got one here. We're just gonna let it swallow it completely. There we go. There we go. There's another one. Another one. Here we go, guys. Three down, 30 more to go. Well, we got four so far. <laughs> it's a harder than I thought. A lot harder than I thought. Man, I wish we could use something like a gill net because a gill net <laughs> would light this place up and it's exactly what we need. Electro fishing sounds like it's more targeted. It's so funny because Mark was saying, I was talking to a guy, he's like, you want to get rid of those bass? I've got an idea. What you do is you rig up a battery and then you uh, shock the whole lake <laughs> or the whole pond, I should say. But uh, that's going to kill everything. Frogs, turtles, you name it. It's going to get rid of everything. We don't want to kill everything. Through over there, and one just comes shooting out of those weeds like freaking crazy, dude. See him? Uh, I can see him. I don't know if the camera will. There we go. We got one here. Oh, there's a huge spool, school of fish going through there now. There we go. There we go. You guys see these here? That's a, a snail. I was gonna, I was thinking about doing a catch and cook escargot. You guys want me to do that? Catch all these little snails and cook them up as a survival food? Never tried these, but I've heard uh, Europeans brought a lot of them here for eating. In 10 seconds, there's your first half dozen. That's how easy it is, guys. What are we messing around with bass for? All right, here comes one. I'm gonna get this guy. He's, uh, he just missed my worm, but now he wants it. Oh, right in the sludge. I didn't want to go in the sludge there. All right, he's looking at it, looking at it. He grabbed it. It's in his mouth now. He spit it out. In his mouth, he spit it out. In his mouth, he's swimming off with it and hooks it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that guy really wanted it. <laughs> That's the biggest one so far. Not huge, but <laughs> biggest one so far. He was aggressive. There we go. Ouch, that hurts. It's easier on a smaller trout. <laughs> it's done not enough. <laughs> oh, he looked at it and he said no. Come on, you stare right at it. Here's another one looking at it. Oh, he got it. There we go. <laughs> Jeez, man. They're so picky. Now we got it. Just drop your worm down. That's it. Just drop the worm and let it sit on the bottom. No twitching, no nothing. Yep. Take it. Swallow it. And another fish. Whew. <laughs> and get some damage done on this side here. We got one, two, three, four, five. Mark's got another one. Maggie's got one too. Maggie's, <laughs> Maggie's eating one. And the quiver. <laughs> Did he get a quiver? Yeah. Oh, they got the spike! They got spined! What are you doing, Maggie? You gonna eat that one? Here we go. We got two interested, one taker. Took it, swallowed it, and hooks it. Oh, that's a big one. It's pulling real. Oh, dude, this one's got a frog in his mouth. Look at that. It's got a frog foot. Just ate it. No, oh, crazy. Here, you can eat that. You already killed it. Another one. 
There we go. There is nothing you can't catch with a worm and a hook. <laughs> this is proof. I think we underestimated how many bass are actually in here. You see like schools of 10 or 15 earlier. You're like, oh, there's 10 or 15 in here. But it's like there's 10 and 15 like throughout the pond, every section, and they're constantly cruising by. I don't know. You gotta call it quits at some point. I'll do a final count when we're done here. Uh, Mark's just gonna get the truck. We're gonna bring the uh, advanced pro trap out around the backside. We saw, we actually saw the snapper. He's in here, so we can we can probably get rid of the snapper. And that's one thing. That's a good thing. Um, and I also want to test out the advanced pro trap. It's like I think it, it, you should see this thing. This thing's mint, and it works underwater. So really hard to trap a coyote, a live trap anyway. I mean, we gave it a go, we gave it a try. We'll try again in the, in the winter again. Uh, I think it's really gonna work well for the snapper. Be surprised if overnight we don't catch one, but you have to come back tomorrow to figure out if we do. And then we're gonna relocate in another pond. Right? We're not gonna kill it, we're not allowed to kill it. I like to kill it, I like to eat it. But I mean, hey, I have to try a snapping turtle, catch a cook somewhere else where they still allow it. Throughout the US, there's plenty of them and there's plenty of them here too. I don't get it, I don't understand. I don't know why they closed it down, but they did. So, hey, that's where we're at. One bass, actually let's grab, we're gonna grab two bass for bait. That's all we need for this trap. We'll rig this up. Let's go down this trail here. Sure. Okay. Hey! <laughs> well that's how it works now we got to do it all over again all right well we figured out that the actual <laughs> it's so sensitive that even just having the fish dangle off the mechanism was enough to keep triggering it so we're gonna do a different method here we're gonna actually string the fish up on a rope and then we'll tie the rope to the trigger so that when the turtle messes with it it'll trigger the system we're just gonna tie that on like so. So now all we have to do is rig up the spring load front and back and then when the snapping turtle swims inside it's going to hit the trigger mechanism and that'll deploy the trigger system and then the doors will slam shut. We'll have to reset it but we're going to move the fish so that they're a little bit more inside the trap here. So when the turtle comes at the back end here it has to go all the way inside the trap we obviously don't want to hurt the turtle, so we want to make sure the turtle's all the way inside the trap before it even touches those fish so it doesn't get the door slammed on it. That would hurt real bad. So that looks good to me. I mean, pretty simple set. If we catch a turtle in here, I'd be happy. So advanced, it's called advanced trap. I think this is the pro, this is the 800. It's the biggest one that they make. So you can catch a coyote in here if you can trick a coyote to go in it. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, you'll see that next winter. We're gonna do it. Try, try again. All right, guys, you guys have to tune back in for the end of this video. We're going to come back tomorrow. We're going to check to see if there's a turtle there, and we're going to give it a proper home where it can live a long life without bothering us. It can bother some other fish, other people's fish. No, we have a spot in mind not far away from here. It's a better pond for it. Well, in my opinion, anyway. I know you guys are wondering what we're going to do with all these little tiny bass. I'm going to take some time, and I'm going to scale them up. I'll scale them and gut them, and then just like this, I'm going to throw them in a pan probably in the oven and my family enjoy a nice little feast they're a little small to fillet as be the traditional way won't take too long to to scale them up and gut them and they're gonna get the most amount of the fish you get to eat the eyeballs and the brains and all that good stuff so nothing really is gonna go to waste on that and as you saw the other one's gonna be uh, turtle bait and we'll catch a nice turtle out of it so let's scale some of these up take them home and we'll feed them to my family You know, the eggs that are in these this is what we want to prevent it's actually tucked away a couple of eggs here good eating for people but we don't want a bunch of bass in our lake I've got here I'm going to collect as well and I'm actually going to bring them over to the trap which is across the pond and we'll throw that in and around the trap and that'll increase our chances of catching the turtle even more you guys see the trap way over there on the other side of the pond all right let's bring this over We'll get a turtle in there, no time. I know a lot of people are pretty dead set 
on cleaning bass and walleye and pike by filleting and that ensures you'll get just the protein out of it but it'll do nothing for the fats that you really want that turtle will guaranteed be in here in no time I don't see it nearby so let's toss the bait in here and we'll let the bait and the trap do the work for us I'm excited to find out whether we get one or not. You guys? This stuff's fun. This is the kind of stuff I enjoy. This makes me feel like I'm a kid again. Playing around. I love that. I love that YouTube has given me the chance to come back. I just heard the trap go. Is that the trap? I swear the trap just went down. <laughs> that would be weird. I don't know, the trap's okay. <laughs> I heard this big splash sound, but I guess it maybe was Mark. He's trying to get a pail for all our bass. Whew. Kind of got my heart racing there. I thought we had a I thought we were gonna get a turtle right away. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. How do you feel about 17? It's a start. <laughs> we need three times that. Yeah, at least. There's a pile. If you guys have any ideas, let me know. If we wait any longer, then the trout will get shocked. So they're scheduled to come in in about a week. So, hey, we give it a shot. We didn't know there was that many bass in there. Yeah, I thought there was a dozen. <laughs> Maybe 15. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's more like 100. Yeah. I think there's probably 100. Hopefully they don't do well. Hopefully they stay at the level they're at now and don't mess up our trout too bad. All right, guys, we're back and pretty excited to come check the trap here. I've got a good feeling that we've got something in there. So, hey anyway, guys, you guys talked about this advanced trap, but what we didn't talk about is how useful it is for not just one thing, but many, many different things. They can catch everything from small game to what we're hoping to catch today, which is snapping turtle. So as far as a trap that'll keep you going for survival. I mean, fairly easy to bait, catch a bass, throw it in there, let it do its job, and uh, whoa, check this guy out. That's a big one. Look at that big guy, that guy's a dinosaur. I don't know if you guys can see him very well, but we'll get this trap opened up and check him out. Oh, and look, I don't know if you can see that, but there's, an, there's another one at the back, smaller one. Are you happy or miserable? Yeah, dinosaur. So this little guy here, <laughs> I'm not sure what species it is, but maybe a painted turtle. I don't know, you guys maybe put your guesses down below. He's got a little bit of orange coloring on the edges and he's pretty shy, but uh, he's not gonna bother our trout at all. So we're gonna put him back right away, let him go. The big snapper on the other hand is one that we do wanna get rid of. So let's throw this guy back in the pond. He can survive. Well, the other one's gonna survive too, just in a different place. This one can survive here if he wants to. Now this monster, he's the one we're really after. Wearing the gloves, not because I'm scared of the turtle, but more just to keep my hands free of bacteria. They can carry all sorts of really bad stuff. So if I have the gloves, I'm gonna use them. Also, they could bite me. Come on. Come on. Oh shoot! <laughs> I can get his tail here. Come on. <laughs> get him off the ground and he's... Oy! <laughs> You're not going in the drink there, buddy. <laughs> he's vicious. <laughs> That's why we don't want him in the pond. Every fish that goes by him is gonna get snapped in half. I don't know how cleanly that went, but <laughs> that thing's aggressive, man. He's well fed, put it that way. He's aggressive and well fed. Oh, we're gonna have to do a plan B here. I think we're gonna pull him away from water a little bit so we can uh, work on him a little bit more without having him to, having us worry about him getting back in the drink. So I don't want to do this twice, that's for sure. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was exciting. That was a little bit more than I, what I bargained for. <laughs> Whew, got him in the truck. We're gonna bring him to his new home. 
That's one less problem we gotta face in the pond. That thing was vicious. Any trout swimming by, bam, gonna smoke them. Not anymore. Let's just hope there aren't any more out there as vicious as that guy. Are you gonna go or are you gonna, one last shot at me? You're gonna do one last shot at me, aren't you? Go. You still wanna fight? <laughs> you still want, go the other way. You, that way. Go, do your new home stuff. I'm happy to leave him here. Are you guys happy to just see him sit here at the side of the creek or do you want like the full release? Back off into the wild. He's obviously a fighter, he just wants to keep fighting. Look at him sizing me up. Do you think he could eat me? Probably would try. What are you gonna do? <laughs> We're best friends now. He's just gonna hang out at the creek. Fish together from now on. Bye bye turtle. Oh, there he goes. Bye bye turtle. Have a nice life. Don't come back. Nice knowing you.